Okay, so number one is the art style. It uses stacked sprites or pseudo 3D. So like these trees, for example, they are not 3D, they're not flat sprites, they are a stack of sprites. And if you jump into this tool right here, you can see if I increase the offset, you can see that each one, it's sort of like a hamburger like of sprites uh, that come together to make the tree. This is what the sprite actually looks like, uh, the sprite sheet rather. And here's what it would look like frame by frame and you add a Y offset and you get the sort of stacked sprite. So that's sort of how it works for basically every asset in the game, including the player character. And the player character is actually an animated stacked sprite. So I'm actually using four separate stacked sprites and I'm just sort of swapping them out. Uh, yeah, I wanted to do that for all the characters, but I ran out of time, but that's okay. Uh, the color palette is uh, a palette by an artist named Alphonse Six. Let's actually jump into the palette page, uh, palettes by Alpha Six. If you look up Alpha Six or Alphonse Six on low spec, you can see uh, a bunch of his palettes. Uh, I like them because they're quite sort of, they have personality and they're a little bit idiosyncratic. Like this, this palette has a lot of brown to it, which is highly specific. Um, let's see, like, you know, this palette doesn't have a red, but they're quite, they're quite unique and interesting and because they're not trying to appeal to every possible project. Um, and then I came across this one, Alpha 6, which is the one that I ended up using for Feather Park. It's even tagged like dull and sad, uh, which is, you know, could be good for an autumn game that, you know, it's supposed to be melancholic. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see, let's walk around a bit. So the the leaves are actually just, uh, you know, I created this leaf uh, scene and, you know, it has, a, it has a leaf sprite and a shadow sprite. And what it's doing is the one, it's, it's moving and rotating, but the rotation is actually happening um, from the, from the corner of the sprite. So if, if you draw the leaf in the corner and you rotate it, it, it creates this sort of swirling that when you combine it with uh, positional movement it sort of mimics like a falling leaf kind of wind pattern that looks nice and the shadow is just a duplicate sprite of the same leaf sprite that is basically that hasn't that starts with an offset that's large and it slowly uh, reduces the offset so if we go into back into the leaf uh, there's when the texture gets assigned, I'm tweening the shadow sprite uh, from 0, 010 to 0, 0, which means the Y offset goes down by 10 over 8 seconds. And that's what uh, how I created that sort of shadow effect. Um, let's see. I guess we could talk about the minigames. Uh, so the minigame basically happens on top of the screen. This is a rock, paper, scissors minigame. As you can see, uh, and I'll just get out of the minigame. And the way that this works is, well, one, when the character gets within range of a interactable creature, is I think what I called it. Uh, so if you go into the chicken, it has interactable creature. You can see the area 2D around it is what I'm interacting with. And you can see this white uh, circle around it. That is uh, this sort of, I think I, called it arc radius. That's actually a, using the native draw. So if you go into, let's see, interactable, there's a draw function. And I'm just doing a bit of math here to uh, draw an arc with, with a space in between and then have that rotate. So that's sort of how that works. So, um, okay, mini game, mini game, uh, rock, paper, scissors. Right, so when you interact, it jumps into this sort of place, some nice music, uh, has, you know, fades out the background, and the background is paused, so you can see everything's frozen behind there. Uh, so that's important to note because you don't want your your inputs to affect the actual in-game characters because this is all happening separately. And so it's important to say, like, get tree paused is true, and then have whatever you need to 
actually accept input have its uh, pause mode to process. So that means that this will allow be allowed to process while the game is paused. It's also worth noting that the rock, paper, scissors is entirely independent of the rest of the game, uh, which means it's wise when you're making the project to, if that's going to be the case, to have it be testable outside of, of the rest of the game. So when I run this rock, paper, scissors, if I want to test it and I'm, I'm implementing it, it, it's playable, you know, as a standalone thing because it doesn't, it doesn't require the rest of the game in order for it to be tested. So I think that's worth noting. Um, if you're going to be doing things outside of, you know, that are independent, make sure everything is, is testable. I think that's that's really important. For example, in the game, I don't have to run the whole, you know, load every every area. Everything is split up. So this is the north area. I've got west area, and you know each area of the game is its own separate scene. So if I want to test just this area, I could just run this scene and start moving around. If it'll load. Okay, yeah, and then I can also walk around. And uh, another benefit of easily testing by splitting up the areas, because I do have this transition effect, um, is that uh, performance, for performance reasons. I don't need to have every single stacked sprite always running, always on the screen all the time, which could have performance implications, especially on web, which they sort of do have a little bit. Um, but but yeah, it's you know performance reasons, testing reasons. There's, there's a lot of good reasons to, to split your game up if you can. Um, and it's you know not a huge cost to the player to have like a half second of a black screen. Um, Let's see. Let's talk about these fences um, because if you'll if you'll notice in this north area scene, uh, there's a lot of stack sprites that are visible, but the fence is just this blue line, and that's because the fence is generate. It's created uh, at runtime. It's not created beforehand, and the reason for that is uh, well, a couple of reasons. But one of them is flexibility. Uh, if I want to change this fence because I change, you know the the room is different size or I don't like the way that one of the corners looks I don't have to you know jump into a sprite editor and and deal with the whole stacked sprite I can just come into here and you know change one of these around and rerun the scene and it's going to you know it's going to change accordingly so let's jump into the fence scene so here is an example of the fence so if I you know move these lines around and I run the fence scene it will generate the fence based on, you know, the shape of, of the fence line, as you can see here. And uh, you know, this is happening in the code. It's it's quite uh, there's a lot of code, but it's not doing anything too complicated. Basically, it's creating other line two Ds with with a positional offset. Again, it's the same thing with the stack sprites. Um, but just using line 2Ds instead of sprites, but stacking line 2Ds on top of each other. Um, so that's how the fence works. Some people have asked about the sort of pixely, chunky art in the art in the art style. Like everything is so pixelated, right? And I think it's worth actually talking about that. Um, because I, I really don't, this is Godot 3, I really don't do anything that special to get this to get this effect. You know, it's just project settings, window. Um, I have my base window width and height, and then I use viewport keep. Viewport keep, not 2D keep. You wanna see what happens with 2D keep? Look what happens with 2D keep. Okay, so this is 2D keep, you'll notice We've lost all the good pixelation. It's almost like, oh, it's, 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 you know, it makes me kind of nauseous to look at. Like it's, it's not cohesive. It's not consistent. Some things look pixelary, pixel, more pixelated than others. I mean, so this is, this is what I don't want. This is not that sort of pixely chunky look, but I, I do want to show you because, um, you know, people have asked, and it's 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 quite simply just a a project setting change instead of two D keep viewport keep. That's it. Well, 
I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about. If you have any other questions about how something might have been implemented, please leave a comment and I'll do my best to try to explain it. All right, thanks. And if you have any feedback on this kind of video, um, let me know. I, you know, I, I, this is a little bit easier for me to do than my other videos, so hopefully it'll encourage me to get more content out there. But if you have feedback, uh, you know, if you want me to dive deeper next time or maybe re-implement some feature that, that is interesting or something like that, uh, just let me know. And the other videos are, are still coming, don't worry. All right, bye.